Hello all, how are you doing today? Thought I'd show you a couple different things uh, uh, early on here and then get back to doing the interior on that uh, Creole SV. Uh, what I really wanted to show you though is I've been uh, working out color palettes and I'm kind of happy in, on how this is coming out. Basically I got an awful lot of stuff spawned but this is just some of it actually. Um, as examples but basically I've created some color palettes now um, essentially I've got the the default palette for any of these uh, uh, newer military survival creations but I also have a couple alternatives um, alternative one is this dark green kind of military look uh, here I'll apply that to this ship here in a minute and you can kind of see how that that looks um, now this works across the board on most everything that I made with the, the human faction. Um, for instance, even like the, uh, newer ship over here, CH5, I can go over here, apply a different, uh, color to it. Um, and it actually goes all the way back to the, uh, MX5s, um, that's about the oldest creation that this actually works on right now. But uh, kind of see what that looks like, recolorized. Now, also what I did is I got like a, a stock palette in here. So if you don't like that, you know, you can also uh, go back and put it back to the default colors pretty quickly. And this also works for CVs and the newer space stations. So let's. Show you on this a minute. So basically, uh, all these things. Since I uh, started using the standardized color palette back when they introduced the the color system in the game, um, I'm kind of pleased about doing that now because now I can just instantly uh, make different color designs, which work across the board on on most everything. Um, oh, there. Just when you do this, make sure you're pointing right at the ship, too. Otherwise, it uh, doesn't necessarily work. But that's not the only color palette I, uh, I did. And I actually got one other one planned. So this is the, uh, like, dark military green look. I don't, you know, I, I kind of kind of like it. It's got a different style to it. Uh, Interior-wise, um, I'll show you. It, it uh, doesn't look too bad either. It is darker. But... Um, let me hop in one of these ships here a minute. Kind of get the idea. I don't have any power on the ship right now. I think I ran out of fuel. But um, get the idea of what it would look like on the inside too. Just generally darker, but it, uh, a little bit more of a grungy look, I would say. But beyond that, I also was working out another uh, color palette. And that is option three, which I'm kind of going for a desert look. Um, this one I'm still kind of working out the details on. Uh, get the uh, the colors to uh, go together okay. But, um, yeah, this also is going to work on most everything. Now, right now on this video, I'm going to put out a link, and it's got the uh, a picture of... The color palette used for this one. Uh, this one I don't really have finalized yet, so I'm kind of kind of working that out. And the other color palette I was actually planning on doing is going back to the initial gray look on these ships, the the, the gray and black look. So like uh, the earlier stuff that I made, uh, so all this stuff would blend into that. So that's kind of the, uh, the different aspects I've been looking at. But some of these, I mean. Um, I don't know. I, uh, it's it's cool that you're able to do this after the fact. So this is very backwards compatible with most things. Um, and uh, that's that's neat. So I would definitely encourage you if you if you're building sets of things, I would definitely try to standardize that color palette so you could have the same options later on. I mean, later on down the road, you're like, hey man, I'm I'm really sick of doing all this stuff and whatever my color scheme is, why don't I just mass 
just make another palette and you can have all kinds of different alternative color schemes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been fun. But yeah, I mean, even, even like this stuff, like the, the Ambry, I mean, all these, all these can instantly be switched to this other color scheme. Whether you like it better or not, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it's mixed. I've, I've got, uh, I like the original white and white and dark gray look. But um, so I wanted to show you that at the start. And all these items uh, that I've got out here right now are uh, work with it. Um, I know a lot more will as well. So uh, now one other thing I just wanted to show you really quick before moving on is the color palette is a little bit more enhanced even over stock stuff. For instance, like I'm going to spawn the current MX-5E and this is what's on the workshop or actually um, and this was built right before there was a color palette change or, or you could make your own custom colors but switching this even to like the default newer color palette which I'm going to get get this one out too um, it changes it a little bit and I think it actually makes it look a little bit better than what it what it did originally um, it basically it it tweaks out the, uh, the the gray and the white and it makes the blacks not as black I guess a little bit more of a dark gray tint to it but I actually think it looks a little bit better so well that that's the start of this video next part I did some work on some stuff and I got some more done on this thing this this big tripod peel eye killing thing um, yeah it's uh, it's coming along uh, better um, I did show this before briefly but I kind of been working out the shape a little bit more and then decided to uh, extend out the edges over here over from what my original uh, layout was and I keep on working out these legs and currently I'm kind of trying to uh, figure out uh, weapon mount positions to target the POI below and this thing's quite big and will fit over most POIs um, except for like really tall ones but uh, so it's it's definitely a work in progress yet but it's coming along now, one of the design aspects I wanted to do on this is on the insides of these feet, it's going to be kind of a wall, and I'm going to try to build a HV that is reversible. In other words, it's got like uh, a cockpit on the front and the back. Um, the one on the back would be allowed for you to back up accurately and mount the HV to the side walls of these feet and then essentially so the, the 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 guns and weapons from it will be facing on the inside and as well as a way to control it in that direction so you could uh, undock it from from these legs and then drive around but when you're docking it would be a lot easier to see where you're docking at so that's why I would have the uh, alternative cockpit facing the other direction so you could easily see where you're docking to uh, the advantage of having these HVs attached to the three legs would be uh, they'll, they'll also shoot on the POI. If they're powered up and they got ammo, um, when this thing lands over the POI, not only will, will the uh, uh, atmosphere compliant weapons, which would be the minigun and cannon turrets, fire on the POI, but so would the turrets on the HV which would be a devastating blow. Uh, it would be like coming in with three tanks at once as well as a CV uh, that I think would decimate POIs very quickly. And the POIs, um, you know, they'd try to shoot back a little bit, but honestly, I don't think they would stand much of a chance. And I think that would go for just about any POI. Testing will be need, to be need to be done on all that, though. But that is the concept. Now, another concept I wanted to do with this um, obviously with the legs, they're, they're way the heck up in the air 
and I don't really want to make walk paths through these legs and the fact because I've got thrusters mounted in places it makes it nearly impossible. Um, however, the back leg is going to be special and I'm going to try to uh, work out a way to have an elevator system that can go up to the top so you can <coughs> get up to this uh, vehicle or this thing from the, from the ground. Um, up on here, there'll probably be like some kind of uh, SV landing pads or uh, internal hangar. I'm, I'm undecided on that one yet. I don't want this thing to be super high in size class. It's quite big, but it's not going to have a lot of room in it. But I'll probably equip it with standard stuff like a farm and a little crafting area. And, um, but its main focus would be storage uh, for dismantling a POI and hauling all the parts away so it has an awful lot of lift thrust right now 236 on that now the other directions are no big deal but the lift thrust is pretty crazy so i'm expecting to get probably around eight 320k uh, storage things on this uh, particular cv and i even got kind of a, a, a name picked out for this thing already i'm not going to say what it is yet though I gotta see if I can make it look more like the name I'm thinking, um, and it's gonna need a big I somewhere for that. So, well, we'll see how that works out. Now, something else I was just messing around with, um, and this was pretty quick, I, I must say, but I was uh, more of a deco thing. But I was making a jump gate for the creel. Um, obviously, I got some unfinished or a unfinished part yet. This was done with uh, using copy paste more or less so there's a couple different chunks and the way I did it is I have these these off angles so I actually was able to copy this chunk rotate it and then use it for a different piece up here too a bit experimental on uh, just trying to learn you know new tricks and things like that so this is just kind of a decorative item obviously there isn't jump gates in the game but I made it uh, definitely large enough for uh, this ship to easily fit through without even being concerned about running into the edges. And it flies right through it, no, no problem at all. Again, just kind of for fun. I'll probably have this out as a friends only thing. I don't think I'll release this uh, to the public. Um, so moving on, um, with the color scheme on these guys over here, I also was, uh, since I did the same idea with the Creole where they have a default color palette, I was starting to mess with a alternative color scheme for the for the Creole. Yeah, let me power this one up here a minute too. And this is just one idea, and I'm kind of working out the details right now. But this is uh, kind of going for a hellish look, like a burnt fire charcoal with some fire-looking lights. Um, you can see that applied to this ship as well. Um, Again, a little bit, a little bit different look, but uh, I, th I like the idea of having uh, alternative color palettes. Now I could do uh, several more for the Creel. I could have like a green one and stuff too, and I probably will. Um, but I was just trying to get a little bit more exotic with this particular color, uh, just to see how it would come out. And I kind of like it. It's it's different. I uh, yeah. Well, anyway, that's all that stuff. So back to business here. Um, last was working on this particular ship, and I want to continue on with that a minute here. So the interior was left like this, and I was a complete idiot. Um, the Pentaxa tank I was searching for in the last video was right in front of my face the whole time. It wasn't buried or hidden. It just, for whatever reason, I thought it was a fuel tank by seeing it from this angle and uh, yeah I completely uh, dropped the ball on that one <clears throat> but to move on here let me I uh, get get some blocks this was uh, laid out mostly last time so I think we had the proper number of parts in here that I that I wanted the eight generators 12 fuel tanks uh, I got eight oxygen tanks now and the RCS count currently at 77, which is okay. 
Although I'm probably going to still add a couple more to it. But, next part here was to keep on working out this interior and try to get this uh, uh, more finished off. Hopefully all the way finished off. We'll see how that goes. Now, something that was brought up in the comments is about uh, severing storage. Like, I got storage uh, ran on, across a couple places on the, on the floor. And if, say, a storage container was broken in the middle... That would uh, could cause a lot of problems. Say this was destroyed here because this links to everything on this side. You would lose the storage all on this side. So my only real solution to that would be to up the amount of storage, or I'm sorry, uh, protect the storage more. Um, I think I got the thrusters off a minute here. Yeah. Well, man, I'm gonna get this off the ground a little bit right now here turn the thrusters back off so this is kind of what it's looking like on the bottom and I actually don't really like my design on the bottom right now much either so I got those two aspects but what I was thinking about doing is trying to lay at least a little more protection over these uh, over some of the storage on the bottom um, side effect to that is gonna make the ship a little bit heavier but I don't think a great deal heavier, but it will add some strength to it as well. And also, I kind of wanted to do something with what I've got going on here. I don't think it's all that cool. So I'm going to start blowing away some blocks over here. And uh, maybe I should do this in symmetry. I just hate that, uh, that, that green um, symmetry line right when you're working at the, the center. So rather than those blocks here, I'm thinking I'll uh, switch that out to one of these newer blocks with a curve on it. I have to modify those end blocks too, but this is a bit experimental. I just want to see how this is going to come out right now. With the creel, I try to do a lot of little breakups and things. Um, like they have more beams, I would say, than what the uh, the human faction do. Uh, that was just kind of a design choice to make it sometimes look a little more, uh, I don't know, detailed or something. I'm not sure. So a little bit different design there. Again, not 100% on it. With so many creations too, I'll, I'll try to work this stuff until I finally get something I like. Um, sometimes it takes two or three attempts at uh, messing with it to see what happens. But here I did want to run some, a thin layer of blocks over uh, a lot of this area here. I'm trying to conceal these, uh, these crates these storage extensions so I'm just kind of building this up a little bit right now I guess I'll just fill that all the way in this would strengthen up the bottom of the ship a little bit too I think Center here. And I'm trying to keep it beveled on the edges uh, so I don't have uh, full blocks. I guess my really only option here is to throw in more of these wedges, which on the other side though would have a like a little gap currently. center the center isn't actually it just uh, doesn't necessarily need a whole new layer here but let's just bevel it out across there all right 
So I think that should sort of uh, make it a little tougher. I know there's some that you can see through here yet. Um, Hmm. Well, I guess I'll leave that for now. Get back on task here. Alright, so I've got a lot of little areas inside of here too that uh, could have more parts in things. Um, it's just I don't really think it needs too many more parts. So uh, I guess I'm going to fill this mostly in right now with uh, carbon substrate. This would be nice though because I'll have some uh, nice flat walls where I can add in uh, some switches and things. Okay, now up around the warp core. Uh, I want to do something that looks a little bit neater. Let's try to uh, go and do some of these curvy blocks here a minute along the edges. Let's see how that comes out. Do something like that oh and, and before I forget as well um, one feature oh shoot you know what that is something else I wanted to address I'm gonna remove the warp core for now and because there's a feature I'd like to get in the ship that it does not currently have and that is a drone hatch um, something I wasn't really thinking about when I was doing the body up I don't want to do the drone hatch in this area though because I kind of like the the block work over there um, but back here it's flat and doesn't have much going on for it. So this would be a nice spot I think to put in a drone hatch. So I'll have to move the warp core a little bit because of this. But yeah, this day and time it's kind of nice to have the feature of, uh, of that. Um, little side effect though is I'm probably going to have to change the side blocks here too a little bit. Oops. Yeah, that's right. And I kind of just wanted to build this up here. substrate though okay so the shield will probably have to be moved then too Hopefully I can still fit all this stuff. Pretty sure I can. Alright, so let's just try to give this a texture coat here a minute.
some doors. Why well, I like to in, indent this in a little bit and also rotate the door this direction is so you don't see the door open up through the blocks. I think I could get away with rotating in either direction, but uh, I think that that should work out all right. Okay, so now we have a drone, a drone location, a drone has location. Um, now we got to get the shield and warp core back in here. shield doesn't put out any heat or radiation or anything so that's kind of cool um, but it is I need that amount of space I'm gonna do another change real quick I'm gonna that was a temporary uh, core location anyway so I'm gonna move the core out of the way for now slam it over here or something At least the shield's small. Actually, you know what? I think I'd rather have it there. Just have to get some more RCS in elsewhere. Alright. Some RCS. Four, you know, where did that put me at now? Seven, nine, okay, I actually upped it a little bit. That's okay, that, that's good. All right, so back at this again. Um, I think I'm gonna uh, use some hardened steel right along here as well. How should I uh, bevel this in at all though? Yeah, probably should. A lot of times what, what I'll do, especially with this block, is I'll, I'll look at the surface on it. Now it's easy to tell with hardened steel uh, what's going to be where your surface areas are. Like the top part of this block, I could texture different than the bottom part of this block. But if I had it rotated the other way, the visible area would be the same kind of on both. So since I wanted to do some texture work on the top part here, I rotated it in that direction. All right. So since I also went with a half lock there, my original idea isn't going to work as well, but I just get out the substrate now. I think I might be able to use this new uh, roundish half lock here instead. Potential prettiness here. Let me grab some cheap glass. And try this. Let's see if I really can kind of see through it. And could put in another cheap part. 
which has to do with these railings here, man. It's amazing how my inventory gets full so so quick. <laughs> Something like that, or yeah, I kind of like that. So you can kind of see the warp core in there, and with the creel too, I especially like the uh, the colors they have on the warp core because it kind of it matches pretty well. So up over here, I'm just gonna throw in a row of hardened steel. And then repeat that same pattern on the front side here. Alright, so from this part here, I kind of wanted this. This area needs to be out like it is because of the location of these thrusters. And the idea behind it is... Um, some of these blocks here might be removed and replaced with cargo boxes, but since you're at eye level with this third block, it prevents you from going any further th in that direction, even though I have this open more. But you need a full block distance between you and that thruster, or you'll get heat and radiation. This protects you from that. So it's kind of like a barrier wall. I could make this thinner here, but then you would get... Uh, radiation and heat and that's that I'm trying to avoid so that's why it was done in that manner so over here I want to uh, kind of angle these side walls up and this would be a good time to turn on symmetry for a little bit at least I hate this so I, I really wish the symmetry uh, wall here was just like a slight tint down, uh, uh, noticeable so you could see where the symmetry line is, but not evasive <laughs> like it is, uh, where it kind of blocks your view from seeing, and especially difficult working at the center of the symmetry line. I'm going to try to just kind of follow this pattern up here for now and see if it comes out looking all right or not. Kind of showing some parts through the wall here, though, and I'm not sure I should be doing that. One of those parts could be moved, too. spot now too. The whole reason I'm doing this is, oh, that's not the center. Duh. Oh well. Because I wanted a, uh, oh, that's not going to, that's not going to work. I was thinking I could have like some kind of pipe beam or something going over to that, but you obviously see it doesn't connect. So that's kind of a problem. Something like that. This could be in a few different spots. Yeah, okay, I can get on board with that. Shield visible from the inside. 
So now I'm going to try to bevel this back out, going towards the front here. So it's got kind of an even flow through it. So all these lines on the bottom going to be, and also this is going to need a ramp going from there to the uh, cockpit because it's up a up a layer. I think the blocks that I've got in place now are required. Let's find out. Well, that one actually isn't. Okay, good. But due to where it is, I'm going to use uh, hardened steel for this as well. Uh, one thing with, with building regular survival ships is typically uh, your biggest engagement will probably be fighting POIs. And t when you're fighting POIs, I figure a lot of times you're up in the air and the POIs are down here. Um, so what's going to happen is you're going to take fire through a lot of these areas here so having a stronger floor and of course your, your front glass and this area would be probably most critical to have strengthened up with with the POI um, now all rules are off and I, I can't tell you how it works in uh, PvP that's that's a whole different can of worms there So now we've got a ramp. I gotta see what's going on underneath these blocks too. Looks like I can't really alter those because that's part of the body line here. So I'm gonna have to, man, I'm gonna have to make this ramp up a second row, I think. I guess this will all help too because uh, it will strengthen up the uh, the floor. I did that just to leave a little bit of gap there. Not that I'm really going for a lot of lag shot or anything like this on the ship, but you know it doesn't cost anything more on what I just did. I guess the hit points of these blocks are a little lower though than the other ones, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll help. Maybe it won't. One thing I do wish so, and I don't think it's the case. I'm gonna find out though, right now. Okay, so what I'm getting at here is the uh, the weight. Um, I guess that's gonna be your mass. It's not really accurate, though. Well, I mean, it's accurate, but it's, uh, it runs it off. Um, so I'm at 168 tons. If I were to pop in, let's see, put in four of these blocks. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I'll have to do that on another try. The thought was, uh, if, say, say like this tiny little block here, does it weigh the same in the game as a full block? And if it does, I don't think it should, because that's that's not fair. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I that is something I uh, I was just thinking about, and I haven't actually really ever tested that to find out if that makes any difference or not. Now I know they fluctuate on hit points, but not by an extreme measure. Not like, uh, like for instance, this tiny little block here Oop. has 106 hit points, and where I'd get a uh, a full block has 200 hit points. So it's obviously being kind of generous um, because you would think this would have a lot less hit points based on its size. So also, it's going to have to do a ramp down over here. All right. So 
on the sides. I gotta figure out how to make this look prettier. Show some more CS. Oh man, there's RCS everywhere. Nah, I don't like that idea. Okay. Let's try something different here. What if this went out that way? I think that would work. And then over here, maybe. I could use some of these and have a smooth uh, transition upward. Actually, kind of where the core is right now is probably not a bad spot for it. I think this is kind of embedded back over here somewhere. Uh, more of a difficult location to hit, especially in PVE. So, yeah, let's do that. Put I'm gonna put in a nice row of hardened steel around it, and maybe something special above it. I don't like to use that one. Okay, that one. The whole reason I didn't like to use the other block is it um, when you texture, like I say, I want to put a light here. Um, when you texture this one, it counts this whole area as the same surface, so I would have to have a big, great big texture light. And I don't want a big texture light. So the alternative one that has the lip on both edges, if rotated correctly, you could put... Oh, I don't have it rotated right. Let me fix that. You could then put in a texture light on just the one surface and have this textured with something else. I got in trouble with symmetry again. Okay, so let's just remove this stuff on this side. I'll leave the, the hard steel on the floor though. Alright, so we're getting there. Um, do a little bit more filling in here in a minute. So the back area, I don't want some kind of fade going on here too, but if I can make it a little more tricky than just a standard, a standard angle block, try at least.
So then we're leaving the Pentaxid tank visible. So I think I'm that that is that is totally fine. Oops. keeping our uh, Wi-Fi visible. Maybe just partially though. Eh. Well, wait a minute. How about getting in some of these these things that I used quite a bit with the Krill stuff. Okay, so these interior blocks here I think are kind of needed, but they could be changed. So it's building up a wall, but that doesn't mean the inside has to be square. Um, what would be interesting here? I'll try this a minute. And on the edges. This one. Oh, this front block here. Okay, so that also is not being shaped on the exterior. So let's, uh, let's try something different here. work. Should have enough room around the cockpit to uh, get out. And basically I'm always trying to leave uh, a block on the sides. Um, some uh, Sometimes I will put something in the back, but cockpit's been kind of getting altered quite a bit. So things keep changing with them. I have ran into a couple problems with that before. On the interior, one of my big uh, things is I'm just trying to kind of make the walls all kind of uh, smoother, I guess, kind of kind of flow from one area to another. So, and then of course, uh, the style I've always done is try to embed everything into the walls. Um, although I think my fridge is off, it probably should be at the block next to it. Actually, since the freezer is going to go here, let's indent this in a little bit and spiff up the looks slightly. How about that on either side? And you know what, that block there, I'm just going to replace with a full too. So then the fridge can be placed there. Yeah, let's get rid of this bevel again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. On the other side, I might as well do something a little biffier too then.
these top three blocks. So I got a little bit of an indent there. I could probably do something here. Maybe like that. And that kind of looks like a form-fitted place for it. this top area here. Now let's go with the angle. break it up maybe with a pipe or something here. and more hardened steel here as well. So all these uh, visible RCS kind of suck right now. Um, as in my placement of fuel tanks and things, not sure. Not sure on that. Didn't necessarily want this stuff being seen into the walls. But I think they were a little bit more hardened locations to put them as well. I don't know. I'll think on that one for now, I guess. Um, all right. Oh, yes. Uh, detector as well. I think I, I took that out originally. But... We ought to go back in somewhere here. There. Okay, so switches and stuff. I'm thinking for now here, I'm just going to... Um, Throw down some of this over here a minute. See what space I've got. So typically, I've put in a lot of switches in, in these uh, ships. I guess I like the old school uh, controls. 
you know, turning stuff off, on and off and not having to use the P menu. So currently I'm just going to lay out the standard format. Now on the newest ship I did, the uh, MX-12H, I was playing with the uh, projector uh, version, um, which I didn't do much with, but I did do a little bit with. So I'm trying to think on what, what switches we're going to need. Obviously one for the drone hatch, one for exterior lights, and then probably the uh, thruster in RCS and maybe a performance mode. So I think if it had four switches, yeah, let's do it on this side. Four switches, I think that would, would do it. Unless I'm thinking of missing something here. Exterior lights, that, and power. Now I can't think of anything else that it would need. Now, fuel tanks. That's bugging me. I almost, I'm half tempted to leave them though and just call it like it is. Maybe if I, uh, if I, once this is all painted and everything, they'll blend in pretty good with the walls and make little light flashes. And if I don't like it at that point in time, I guess what I could do is alter this, this line so it comes up uh, a little bit further out and then kind of angles up to concealing those fuel tanks over there that's an option um, well anyway I guess I didn't get the entire in interior done I would say the layout and the block work is pretty much done um, you know except for one 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 thing and that is cargo boxes I haven't addressed those yet and I think that could be kind of neat so this area over here, what I was actually thinking about doing is adding quite a few cargo boxes. Um, I'll make texture behind here a minute too. I'll probably have to remove all these parts before it's uh, when I'm texturing this stuff anyway. So this is just kind of laying out the stuff. So we could actually get like four cargo boxes over there, probably on both sides. Quite a bit. Um, then there's this area over here too, which actually could have some more. I guess this thing has a fair amount of room in it for this stuff. Oh, one problem though. This hump in the floor and the placement of the warp core. Huh. Okay. Never mind. I was worried that you were going to get radiation from this. Seems awfully close, but it does not seem to be affecting that. Okay. Good with that then. Yeah. Well, I think that's about it on uh, the block work on this. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. One more feature I can throw in here a minute. Um, maybe some passengers, maybe a passenger seat or two. Where? Technically, could have like a couple right up over there. Hmm. Yeah, that could work out. Some of these RCS, I might move around again. I'd like to not have so many of them visible. Um, but other than that, I think it's about good now. Well, all right. Uh, I think that's it for today's video. Uh, again, it's taking a little bit longer. Last part is the, the really boring part, too, where I just kind of texture everything, which can take a while. And uh, it's not, I don't think, very exciting to watch. 
Um, if you understand the, the, the style and kind of, I've, I've done a lot of texturing on other videos. Um, I'm just kind of doing the same thing. With the Creole, I'll, what I'll probably end up doing is have like a base color for this, this row here, and then start going through the Creole color palette of the different shades of purple. And like, uh, I'll have a tone here and a different tone here and a different tone here to give it a bit of a gradient look. It's hard to notice um, as I have the colors pretty tight so they, they don't stay, they don't look too terribly different from one to the other, kind of like you see over here. But it's just a little something if you're looking at it uh, close up and detailed wise uh, on how it would look. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to save this real quick. And I'm going to go to color palette four, which is my so far kind of work in progress Creole color palette. Um, and there we go. Now it's a now it's a different colored ship. Um, I saved it because I didn't actually make the reverse color, so I haven't uh, programmed in the, the the default one into my color palette yet. So I can't restore it back to its original instantly, like I can with the other ones over here. All right. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hope you got a little bit more insight on kind of how how I've been going about the interiors from the layout and things like that. Starting with the storage, trying to work things as I go. You got to start somewhere, and then I start modifying it to make things fit better later. Kind of like these fuel tanks and stuff. I'm gonna probably try to find other homes for them or find a way to conceal them. Um, but I might leave some parts exposed. Maybe some of these RCS over here, I'll leave like these two, but I'll turn them sideways or something and maybe put a little something, a grater or something in front of them. Um, and then a whole lot of texturing. <laughs> and then finally the, uh, the lighting. Um, and uh, then after that, it's just rigging the switches, getting the LCDs uh, put in. And I think that's about it. And then the ship should be about done at that point in time. Of course, I got to, you know, finish up my texturing and stuff on the outside, too. Okay. Well, y'all have a good day. See you later.